After 180 some episodes, I don't know how many other intros I can create besides, hey everybody, Kevin Goatee here, gutting the sacred cow. Guess what? One of the Bulletproof films is about to fall. What? Animal House. That's right, Animal House. The absolute fraternity classic that has spanned the years, father to son, mother to daughter, what have you, is now being attacked by whom? Allie Gertz, that's who. Who's going to join me as co-host? Why? Dave Quist from the Blockbuster Mentality Podcast. And let's just say fireworks ensue. Can Ali climb the mountain of impossibility and make even a semblance of an argument against Animal House? Let's find out. A, you can never go too far. B, if I'm going to get caught, it is not going to be a guy like that. Dave Quist, guest host. Name that film. I have no freaking clue. Say it again. <laughs> a, you can never go too far. B, if I'm going to get caught, it's not going to be a guy like that. I have no idea. Let's go to our guest for the day, Allie Gertz. Allie, welcome Hi. to the show. How's it going? It's going quite quite good. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Allie, do you know what film that quote is or that quote uh, film is from? Or vice versa versa? From Animal House. <laughs> It is not from Animal House. <laughs> it is not. It is. Come on, guys and girls. I thought this was a layup. It is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh. That's funny. I know that movie so well, and I couldn't even, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's coming back to me. Um, the scene it, where he's on the phone, he goes like, there's another phone around here. Find it. He has his hand on the phone. He looks at the camera goes, A, you can never go to. We switch Sloan yes, and Cameron yes, right yes, there. Yes. That's that. Uh, Welcome to Gutting the Sacred Cow, the best movie review slash movie debate podcast out there where we invite guests to pick a film they find overrated or hate and try to convince us to see their argument. But here's the twist. The film must meet one of these criteria. Why the beloved, critically acclaimed, or a financial success. Allie has decided to just say, for my first time, I'm going to kick your fans' teeth right in and pick up <laughs> a bulletproof film, or so we thought, and that is 1978's Animal House. Woo! A budget at the time of $3 bucks, a box office haul of $141.6 million. Now, wow. Good turn, Lord. That, turn that into 2023 money? I sure did. A budget of $13.3 million dollars. A box office haul of six hundred fifty-five point five million. Oh shit! That's like that's Ant- forty that, that's, fifty times budget. Holy crap! That that's is, a massive hit. That's Ant Man two money, not Avengers money. We're getting there. Yeah, but not made for two hundred million. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, I had no idea either that this made that kind of ROI. That's nuts. Wow. IMDb, lady and gentleman, is a scale one through ten with decimal points. Allie, what do you think Animal House scored on the old IMD beer? Oh God, I feel like uh, a lot of people that are uh, online uh, would love this movie, so I'm going to give it a high score. I'm going to assume it's at least an eight, eight out of eight, ten. Eight flat. How about you, Sir Quist? Where do you think this ranked on the IMDb? Uh, I think it's lower than eight, but it's higher than seven. So I'll say <laughs> 7.3. Woof. One of you is so close. You can just taste it. 7.4, Dave Quist, Damn. right there. <laughs> but that's good enough for both showcases on the fabulous. Price is right. Nice. <laughs> Critics, as we know, Rotten Tomatoes, 1 through 100. We're going to go to Dave Quist first. What do you think the critics' Rotten Tomato score is for Animal House? Well, it's a beloved movie, so it's got to be high. 87. Allie Gertz? I'm going to go 82. 91. Wow. Over 90. Wow. I got to say I'm shocked with the critics are that high. and Not a lot of retro reviews going after some of the uh, <laughs> problematic issues, well, I'm sure that will be discussed in this episode. Back to Allie. What do you think the audience has for the score on Rotten Tomatoes? Uh, gosh, uh, I'll go like 85. Dave Quist. I think it'd be higher than critics, so I'll say 93. I'll say 89. 89. No response. Oh. Okay. 
Well, yeah, was that I the answer? You were guessing. Yeah, I thought you were guessing. guessing. I'm, to I'm not oh, guessing. Yes. I have the notes in my hand, Allie. I thought you were a cheater, but no, who I, still thought no, the way I'm, you phrased it? I love that. Oh, I did. All right. <laughs> listen, every listen, Babe Ruth didn't hit a home run every time. Uh, yes, no. I, I'm the host. I know the answers. No, <laughs> I know that's what I was thinking. What the hell is he saying? All right, kids, <laughs> grab a. I'll, I'll give you a, a five Mississippi while you go to the fridge and grab a cocktail because now it's time for quotes. Grab a brew, don't cost nothing. Eric Stratton, Rush Chairman, damn glad to meet you. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Yeah. Pinto. Why Pinto? Why not? I'm not, oh, that, jo- I'm not no, joking. Sorry, the, this is. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead. Go jo- ahead. Sorry. <laughs> but thank you, sir. May I have another? That was the thing that was in every like 90s, 2000s shock jock morning radio show where they would play like random stuff from movies. I swear I've heard that, that a thousand times. Oh, the morning zoo. Uh, the morning show. Yeah. Yeah. The morning zoo queeves. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not joking. This is my job. <laughs> You're a goddamn disgrace. He can't do that to our pledges. Only we can do that to our pledges. Oh, boy, this is great. See if you can guess what I am now. I'm a zit. Get it? (laughs) I hope I score. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Do you mind if we dance with yo dates? Otis, my man. The Negro stole our dates. Oh, boy. And of course, ubiquitous 0.0 fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life. No. Was it over when the Germans bobbed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> Niedermeyer, dead. And my favorite under the radar quote May I have 10,000 marbles, please? <laughs> I left a ton of meat on the bone because I forgot how quotable this is. Allie Gertz, what quotes jumped out at you? Frankly, the reason that I picked this movie is because I find it not very quotable, and I was shocked when like I went through the quotes um, because I don't find any of them funny except for the German line, and like they're good moments. But I, I'm not lying. Like <laughs> there aren't very many lines that jump out to me in this movie as being good. Something tells me Dave Quist is going to be on the converse side of this argument. Dave Quist, <laughs> got, get some quotes out there, buddy. I'm sure you yeah, got. A scroll. I, I think you hit them all, but they. Oh, sorry, toga, toga, toga. That. Oh, yeah, toga, toga. Yeah, so go. funny. <laughs> what it is is that the way that this is a 1978 film, and these feel they've made they essentially the the culture has taken them on by osmosis. They don't even you don't even have to know what it's from, but you've heard it, kind of a thing. I mean, when they, I feel like it, when scrolling through Twitter, there's some version of the when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor, someone says it, you know, right. Um, it's so it's I think it's one of the most influential films in terms of those lines. I mean, and then there's a whole line of films that basically copied this movie. So, um, yeah, uh, it is. It, I think it is actually one of the most quoted movies maybe ever. I would agree. I have Caddyshack as number one, and this is easily top five in quotable films. Airplane Naked Gun also up there as well. <laughs> you ever Obviously. seen a man naked? <laughs> Doesn't get old. Five fun facts tell me you wouldn't have killed for this iteration if you appreciated this film nonetheless this this version of the film would have been steroids ready they wanted dan Aykroyd to play d-day brian doyle murray to play hoover bill (laughs) murray to play boone and chevy chase to play otter wow (laughs) wow that's a very different movie as long as Tom Hulse is still in it, I will say like I had such a huge crush on him as a kid for some reason. So I did, I did think I might like enjoy this more because I just I think he's so adorable. And then you found out he was gay. I think that's often the case for crushes that I have. <laughs> <laughs> I think he started it. <laughs> You've got a type, I can tell. <laughs> Number two, Universal Studios only greenlit the movie because Donald Sutherland, who was a recognizable star signed on to appear as Professor Jennings. I can't believe Donald Sutherland is the reason why this film got great. <laughs> I know. And you know, one of my gripes of this film is that we see more of his ass than Karen Allen. <laughs> Very true. Years earlier, number three, the dean of Oregon University, where this was shot, years earlier, he rejected to have the production of the of the graduate shoot on campus. So not wanting to let another Hollywood moment pass him by, he approved the production without even reading Animal House's script. He gave them such carte blanche that his own office was used to film Dean Warmer's office in the movie. 
Nice. That's fun. That's hey, it's the title of the segment. <laughs> <laughs> if you thought that was fun, I got a real chuck out of this one. Actor Dwayne Jesse, who played Otis Day, the leader of the band at the Dexter Lake Club, and he legally changed his name to Otis Day after gaining popularity following the release of the film, and he still to this day tours with the band Otis Day and the Knights. Oh, I love that. Love it. I do too. Number five, Animal House spawned a short-lived TV spinoff in 1979 called Delta House, which aired on ABC. Canceled after three months. Oh. Surprise. Oh, no. That's, How, yeah, that sounds terrible. Ramis, Miller, and Kenny wrote the pilot episode, which the actors who played Dean Warmer, Flounder, D-Day, and Hoover all reprised the roles. This show also debuted uh, the television debut of Michelle Pfeiffer. Wow. wow. So network TV version, huh? That sounds yeah. great. It sounds scintillating <laughs> after what goes on this romp, fun romp. <laughs> Let's get right to the fans who had a lot of more questions up then versus our other episode we taped tonight, which was Vertigo. So let's get to Ask a Gutter. The big, at the big Nick J, why does Allie Gertz hate togas? <laughs> um, you know, that's a great question. Uh, I'm, I'm just very judgmental. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Someone seemed to have thought you were put on double secret probation, so... That could be <laughs> That's it. exactly right. <laughs> All right, Allie. My GPA yeah, is that's... also low. My GPA is very low. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's zero points. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> or maybe you're at the top of the Delta Pledge class. Two Cs, two Ds, and an F. Congratulations, <laughs> Kroger. You're at the top of the Delta Pledge class. Allie. Hey, there go. There's another There's another quote. Double secret yep. probation. Oh, Most yeah. people have no idea where that came from. Ubiquitous is all hell. Yeah. All right, Allie. F. Mary Kill from Eric 4953. Bluto, flounder, otter, fuck, <laughs> marry, or kill. <laughs> oof, God. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> oof. It's, it's not an ideal situation to be put in. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I guess I will kill... No, I'll, I'll marry flounder. Aww. And I will fuck Bluto and I'll yeah. kill otter. Why kill I, Otter? I would have expected he would have lived somehow. You know, he's just uh, by by rule of the game. I'm fucking Bluto, and I'm oh. marrying um, Flounder, so he's just left to the left to death. It's nothing right. personal other than my feelings about the other guys. So. <laughs> I would, that's an interesting side of logic. I'm glad I asked. Next. <laughs> Cedar Creek, 1864. I love Animal House, but I've always thought that there is not one character in the movie that you cannot take out of the film and have it irreparably destroy the story. Can you tell me I'm wrong? Even Bluto is not key to what little story we have. I think that's an interesting way of phrasing it. Uh, like, I don't know. Like, there isn't really much of a story at all. So I think you could easily remove a lot of these characters except for, like, you could just change them with someone else. Like, I, I think that's one of the reasons that the movie doesn't hold up to some viewers because, like, the, it's not very, like, character heavy or plot heavy. So I think you kind of could replace the characters. So, no, I can't convince you that you're wrong. I don't know. <laughs> there's there's could, some double negatives in that question. Yeah, I'm a little confused. <laughs> I'm confused by the question, but I would only I agree. Are... I would only argue Dean Warmer is the one that you cannot replace. Sure. You need a Dean. You need a Dean. And then everyone else is kind of just fun. At Nemirovsky, but you can't hold a whole podcast responsible for the behavior of a few sick, twisted gutters. For if you do, <laughs> then should we blame the whole podcast? And if the whole podcast is guilty, then isn't this an indictment of our entertainment institutions in general? Gentlemen. <laughs> okay. I love, I love that. <laughs> Thank you. At it feels so modern. Does it feels like something you that you know? It sounds like that. Nor that that I guess this was at the time maybe people were starting to make these kinds of arguments politically and socially, and so the movie that must must have really struck an even bigger chord. I think at the time. Uh, at Xiphos, I believe this sums Ali Gertz' pre-failed attempt to climb this mountain. He put up a YouTube clip of Quint from Jaw singing "Farewell" and "Adieu, you fair Spanish <laughs> ladies." That's fair. I, I take it. <laughs> At Mike Price in L.A., of course, the writer for The Simpsons we love. Iconic. For Allie, Kevin Bacon, flattened like a pancake. Too subtle? <laughs> Way too subtle. <laughs> Way too subtle. <laughs> At Lord Snurse, the Allie Gertz from one of the grooviest Simpsons podcasts around. 
Nice. Just going to sit there grooving on it. Springfield's local playhouse is performing Animal House the Musical. Name some of the cast members and their roles. I don't know if it makes sense for Bluto to be Barney more or if it's Homer. Like, I guess if it's like, if we're going mainstream, it's got to be Homer as Bluto, right? And then Dean, obviously, super <laughs> Nintendo Chalmers. <laughs> and um, what's a fun one? Tom Hulse, I think, could be, we could do a surprise casting as. Um, Let's see. Oh, Frank Grimes could be a I was going to say Hulse. Frank Grimes. <laughs> right? Damn it. That's yeah. perfect. Oh. Let's see. Is there anyone else that's like a fun, like, oh, yeah, I guess. Well, okay. So if Homer is Bluto, then Flounder could be Barney, maybe. Right. And I was thinking Flounder would be the German kid for some reason. Oh, my God. Ruder. 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 That's really cute. I mean, I'm worried about an eight-year-old being in a frat, but yes. <laughs> I mean, listen, we could just do the Homer Goes to College episode and just watch that. Oh, my. Wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't we all just love that moment? Oh. Yes. I would, I would like to think that I like to think that Pinto could be the Spanish bee. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and then Stork could be um, Dr. Nick Rivera. Mm. Hi, everybody. okay, you know what we're <laughs> you know what we're doing at Eric four nine five three Otis, my man. Not a question, just a statement, but that's cool. Yeah, at pedestrian. I mean, Animal House was the OG problematic in pretty much every conceivable way. It's also really <laughs> funny and dumb. People cite Spinal Tap, but Tim, Tim Matheson has a better cucumber scene, though. I have to disagree. I think this. I think the cucumber scene of Spinal Tap is so good. I don't think you could top it. I hate Spinal Tap, but get that's another the podcast. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but it's so overrated. It's oh, so, it's give, just. Give me not... a second to put on my Spinal Tap shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the approach, of the, the, the cold approach of the grocery store as if there was. Yeah. Where did this even come from? And it's hilarious. What a coincidence. I have a Dean Warmer at home. <laughs> have you done Spinal Tap on the show yet? No one has done it. Can you oh. can you do it and I'll be the host of that and I'll tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. It's funny you say that. Every year we we pick a film that we hate and we sit in the gutter's chair and flip the flip the rolls around. I have done The Princess Bride and I have Ooh. done. You just hate Rob Reiner. Uh, you just hates everything. And, no, it's not true. And A Christmas Story, which is pure trash. And those those <laughs> are one of the worst films in this American history, and people are, 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 are blinded by nostalgia. Stop it. At, I, I could – wow, crazy. Okay, keep going. At, at Eric4953. Well, you're the one who wanted to come on and do Caddyshack, which you have met with a fuselet of bullets and our oh. RPGs and landmines. <laughs> At Eric4953, do you mind if we dance with your dates? My cucumber is bigger. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. I'm not going to sit here and have you badmouth the United States of America. Hashtag quotes. All right. Uh, at uh, at I-E-K-O-B-R-I-D, amazing pseudonym. At Ellie Gertz, it's Bruce McGill's mustache, isn't it? Too much bristle in his broomstick. Mm, yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> he also <laughs> looks 40 that, years old. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> At Hokey 90 underscore CA Animal House, this cow has a very thick hide. If the quote section does not include Otter's entire suspension dis suspension defense speech, I will consider it consider it a moral failing question. Is this Kevin Bacon's best work? No. <laughs> ah, I get it. A Friday the 13th fan, I see. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> At Matthew Carangelo, my question regards to Animal House, which monologue was funnier, Hoover's in front of the disciplinary board or Bluto's when the Germans bomb Pearl Harbor? I think the Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And he also says, regardless, that movie's a goddamn classic and should be required viewing for all incoming college freshmen. Sure. I do agree with that. I do think that this movie is like super, super important and that everyone should watch it. It's for just the, that for the it's, just, <laughs> it's like, don't be this way. Don't act like this. Don't write movies like this. <laughs> no, I just think it's important in terms of like you, you have to watch these movies so that you understand pop culture. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it's yeah, it's like learning <laughs> like, you know, the numbers. You have to learn the numbers before you learn how to do math. <laughs> right. Someone's a math teacher, I guess. Oh. It's, someone is just no one here <laughs> yeah, definitely definitely not here let's go <laughs> listen no one listens to the end of podcast so let's get her plugs out now Allie Gertz <laughs> what are you up to where can we find you what are you working on 
Uh, thank you for asking. You could uh, find me at Allie Gertz on all the things. Um, and I'm currently working on a Nine Inch Nails cover album. Uh, I just funded my Kickstarter, uh, but I'll be posting updates on Twitter and uh, my website. And once that is available for purchase, it'll be on vinyl and CD and even cassette. Um, what? So... Cassette? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're coming back, guys. They're coming back. <laughs> I mean, That's awesome. are, are they going to do the cover for the reel to reel as well? <laughs> um good question good question um i uh but that, that that that's that's what i'm working on so nine inch nails if you like nine inch nails that's what uh you can check out you'll probably Love like it. it more than my take on animal house <laughs> <laughs> dave quist blockbuster mentality podcast what else is kicking over there buddy uh yeah you can uh find me at dave underscore quist and or at blockbuster mentality to catch all of our podcasts we have an upcoming episode with our uh, with kg where oh. we talked the founder and yes. uh, that one should be dropping either this week or next week i promise <laughs> we recorded this thing back in january <laughs> yeah i used to uh, work at blockbuster i worked the last one in my uh, hometown oh did you Mm -hmm. it's it. it's you know we 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 love it it's it's nostalgia i just we, I, we have the paradox of choice now and uh it, yeah. you know we used to walk into those stores and they didn't have the movie you wanted maybe life was teaching you a lesson and then you would find <laughs> you'd go to the classic aisle and you would find something that you never thought you'd watch and you love uh, i i absolutely hated the uh, the highway robbery they would charge for popcorn and other <laughs> concessions to go it's a bundle they, seven dollars you know. <laughs> in the time for popcorn is you might as well just pull my pants down stick a gun in my butt like it's the same kind of <laughs> effort <laughs> give me, give it's, me the exploded it's, cucumber <laughs> <laughs> it's insane it's insanity and oh my lord uh you can of course go to gutting the sacred cow.com to find a sweet ass t-shirt hat mug whatever we got it all gutting the sacred cow at gmail.com if you want to drop a note say hi or to advertise but most importantly go to your podcast platform of choice leave us that treasured five star rating two and three sentence review it certainly helps in that fickle algorithm that no one can figure out except for mr beast so there <laughs> we have it gtsc podcast on twitter gutting the sacred cow podcast Instagram, TikTok, and classmates.com. We're sure that'll do it for that. <laughs> Let's, hey, Dave, why don't you help me usher Allie into the lion's den as she, on her maiden voyage, really picked a film that the fans are not happy to hear <laughs> assailed. But let's have her nonetheless go and gut but the, the sacred. sacred. Cow. Wow, that really hyped that really hyped me up. <laughs> Dave, I just want to say, Dave did that on the first try in a co-host chair. It took Kevin Israel and I no less than 77 attempts to get that on the same bar. So well Incredible. done, sir. Incredible. Allie. I was, I was prepared and I, you know, so okay. Maybe next time we'll get it time. He's got the cadence down. He's like, yes, I did it. Allie, yeah. get on with it, girl. Let's see what you got. All right. The the thing that I thought I would start with is I find Animal House probably as boring as Jenning finds Milton. It's a little bit long-winded. It doesn't translate very well into our generation, and the jokes are terrible. <laughs> um, uh, so I actually asked ChatGBT to help me explain. Has anyone done this yet? Oh, no, <laughs> that's, a, that's a first. Not that, no, that, but let's see what ChatGPT says. I'm sure it'll be nice uh, crisp. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So first and foremost, Animal House is a film that relies heavily on crude humor and offensive stereotypes. <laughs> From the portrayal of women as sexual objects to the use of racial slurs and derogatory language, the film is rife with problematic content that is difficult to ignore. While some may argue that the film is a product of its time and should be judged within the context of the era in which it was made, this argument does not hold up under scrutiny. The fact remains that the film perpetuates harmful stereotypes and reinforces negative attitudes towards marginalized groups. Furthermore, the film's plot is a, f a flimsy and poorly developed story. The story revolves around a group of misfit college students, yada yada. While well, there are some memorable narratives, uh, uh, while well, there are some memorable moments and comedic set pieces, the film ultimately fails to deliver a coherent narrative or a satisfying conclusion. The characters are thinly drawn, lack depth, and it makes it difficult for audiences to become invested in their story. I was, this was my first time using ChatGPT. I was so impressed by this. I really wish that this was like how I did every podcast, but I wanted to not lie and say that I came up with it on myself. Um, <laughs> It's not kind of amazing, but uh, yeah, I have to agree that uh, for for people that did not grow <laughs> wait, up with wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. 
<laughs> first of all, is Chat GPT doing a Nine Inch Nails cover album? Yeah. Better stay in his lane, Chat GPT. <laughs> I did ask Chat GPT to ask me uh, or to help me with some lyrics of a song I'm working on, and they were not as bad as I wished they were. <laughs> uh, okay, so you feel this AI prompt was able to help you, and but you saw the movie, so. I don't know if I did. Okay. <laughs> no. Yes, no, I didn't. I didn't even watch it. Allie, I, I, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna jump. Out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump out of turn for a second. I just <laughs> put in. Give me a positive review of Chat GPT of Animal Let's House. Let's do it. Let's do it. Animal House, <laughs> Animal House, directed by John Landis, released in 1978, is an iconic comedy that has stood the test of time. This movie is widely regarded as a classic, and for good reason. A perfect blend of wit, humor, and satire that make it one of the best comedies of all time. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to skip that part because it's describing what you know. The movie is already known for its hilarious and memorable scenes. Who can forget the toga party, the food fight, or the parade scene? These moments have been ingrained in pop culture and are still referenced and parodied to this day. Another reason why Animal House is such a great movie is its ability to satirize college life and society at large. The film takes aim at everything from hazing to the Vietnam War and does so with an irreverent and subversive tone. It is a movie that is not afraid to poke fun at the establishment and challenge the status quo. Finally, oh my God. The, film sound <laughs> the, the, the film soundtrack deserves a special mention. From the opening strains of Louie Louie to the climactic performance of Shout, the music in Animal <laughs> House perfectly captures the spirit of the era and adds overall enjoyment of the film. In conclusion, Animal House is a movie that has stood the test of time because of, because of its memorable characters, hilarious scenes, sharp satire, and a great soundtrack. It is a movie that will make you laugh out loud and leave you feeling good. Whether you're a college student or just a fan of great comedy, this movie is a must see. <laughs> oh. Man, Chachi just <laughs> got a split personality. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yo, they are they are Switzerland in this piece. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, what what I'll say about Animal House is that if you didn't um, grow up with it, like I do think that the nostalgia card really, really does a lot of heavy lifting, especially since there have been so many like college movies or just kind of like you know young guys getting into trouble movies that have done it better in my opinion since and i just find that so much of the humor is it's hard to separate from you know just the parodies and 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 references that have come since mm. uh so it doesn't feel very fresh and that's not its fault it's to its credit that it is so parodied and shown over the last however many years it's been but at the same time it's not a very enjoyable experience to watch it if you don't have that connection to it already which makes me feel like it's just not something that really holds up to new viewers like if you were raised on it i could totally see thinking that it's amazing i watched it once as, once as a kid and that was not something that made me want to go back in part because I didn't know what the fuck was happening <laughs> like you know like <laughs> i was a kid when i saw this and i just remember thinking that that gay actor is cute um <laughs> and, <laughs> wait ali um, i got a question how old are yeah, yeah. you how old are you just for for, for uh, comparison I'm, as well as and how and how old were you when you saw this um i'm 32 and okay. then i was um nine when i saw it okay all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so it just didn't quite uh, work for me but like I, I don't know like I watched other movies from the 70s uh, when I was like 9 or 10 like The Jerk and Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein and like you know uh, like I think Holy Grail came out around this time too and yep. Slapshot is actually one of my favorite movies ever and that came out in 77 and I think like there are still some slurs in all of those but they're done in a way that's like fairly like excusable you know and like I wait get... wait 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 i'm gonna call bullshit blazing saddles excusable slurs some oh. of them some i didn't say blazing saddles specifically <laughs> i was thinking of like you know the jerk talks about race in a way that is very specifically from the lens of like this character as opposed to kind of like making it seem like eh, this is how everybody thinks and how everybody talks and everybody feels just because like you could tell by everything came out at that time like paper moon came out at the same time you know like there are movies yep. that were like <laughs> yeah. i don't know it's just i sometimes get annoyed when people use like it was the times it was the times but like was it the times like some of these things but i don't know it just felt like uh, sometimes i don't connect as much to crude for the sake of being crude for example, I prefer The Simpsons to South Park, and a lot of people really, really, really don't. They find that South Park is funnier and better because it 
is edgier yeah. and pushes the boundaries more. That's just not the thing that I connect to. So for you know that reason alone, I just don't fully like sink my teeth into this. And more than anything, I just find it kind of slow. Like I just find it to be a little uh, hard to pay attention to. Maybe it's my ADHD brain not <laughs> finding enough to latch onto. But I just didn't find anything that really like sucked me into it. And I was really hoping for something that I could kind of follow a little bit more. And I wish that there was a little bit more story or more like wall to wall jokes. And I feel like Homer goes to college is funnier in, you know, 23 minutes than this is in its entire run. I think the Simpsons. Nerd! <laughs> Nerd. I think there's two interesting points in there. One um, about things that have been watching the imitation of the original thing that has already made its cultural imprint is is weird to see to go to go back to the original. It doesn't feel the same because it feels like it it itself is derivative. That makes exactly. sense. And I think it's hard. Yeah, and Simpsons I think is as guilty of that as any other piece of media in history because I think a lot of the introductions to things that people saw they first saw in the Simpsons and had no idea where it was <laughs> re referred to um but it is a, yeah that that experience the order in which you see things so I, I can definitely see that um the thing about the slurs <laughs> is you know, oh, this is gonna be you, good. Yeah. Is that because well, I think racism is good? <laughs> no, I like there. that people get raped. Yeah. <laughs> Even Blady's Blady don't use that as a sound bite. You have to provide <laughs> yes. context. Video <laughs> Graham coming up. <laughs> no, next week, Allie Gertz has this to say. <laughs> Even Blazing Saddles, the it's the language is cruder, but the point of it actually is, I would argue liberal or anti-racist and it's in in, yes, in exactly. the end yeah well, and so also there are black people that are in on the joke and are like involved right. in it and like yeah. supported it you know and then that's the difference too like it's not you know i Slapshot was written by a woman by the way um mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know that but it's like if you have people that are creatively involved that are then making these comments about the marginalized group at hand like it feels a little bit different right i mean it's not yeah. my place to say but it feels a little bit different yeah I, I get it but i would say this movie where you have like niedermeyer at the end saying the 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 gay slur word <laughs> um <laughs> he's so it's these these words are being said by the bad guys usually and then it, where there's the uh where there's the devil and the angel on the shoulder we know that it's wrong so i think the mo the movie isn't endorsing any of these things so ultimately it's like the pe the characters the, the people who say these things are generally seen as being in the wrong or the antagonists of the film um, the the devil on the shoulder though is interesting because it's not a it's a good character like tom holse's character is supposed to be kind of a funny. sweeter guy you know um much sweeter <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's yeah, a guy. I, he's, he's a guy getting caught in the supermarket. Like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm stealing your perfect drink. <laughs> it's just a prank. And yeah, yeah he, ends up, he ends up picking her up, and then you know, in a nice, subtle way. But then you find out, wait a minute, she's underage, really right. underage. Oh god, look at those bazoongas. Was... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you know, Tom Holtz's character is kind of like the Michael Sarah <laughs> character in Superbad, where similarly, like they are both put into situations where they could have taken advantage of a drunk girl. Right. And that's actually my criticism was super bad too. And that came out so much, you know, more recently. Yeah, 2007, it's, it's still eight, yeah. treated as like, wow, he's a hero for not raping that drunk girl. And I'm like, is he a hero? Like, I feel like we should just not have uh, sex with people that are super, super drunk. More than anything, I just think that um, it, uh, it, like, I don't know. If I get to show um, a number of movies to people like if I only have like 10 movies to show people and the assignment is show them like some of the most like important cultural movies whether you like them or not I might put this on that list but if it comes to like show show people a movie that can stand the test of times in terms of comedy and plot and characters uh, this wouldn't make it for me I just find that it it lacks in the ways that it's not historically relevant um and without its historical relevance. I don't know how strong it is. Um, but, you know, I went into it a little afraid because I know I was watching it for this podcast that maybe I would like it a lot because I I love <laughs> I love 70s comedies a lot. And I also love a lot of people in this cast. Um, and John Belushi is like so good in this. It's I forgot like uh, but it just it just never fully captured me. And I uh, wanted it to like, you know, and by the way, uh, my demo in terms of um, who likes my music and then also who wants to go on a date with me 
all old men. So I'm really risking it all by saying that I don't <laughs> like animal house. I'm really, I'm really limiting who's going to date me after this. So I just oh, want to say man. it's actually very brave of me <laughs> yeah. to come on here and say that I don't so love are this. You're, you're a daddy chaser? What, <laughs> they chase me, honey. Okay. <laughs> they chase me. I'm glad <laughs> that this is just one, this is just one big ass form for your fucking Tinder profile. That's cool. Yeah, no <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but I, I, I've been uh, like afraid to ever talk about like, yeah, I don't really like Caddyshack that much. Or yeah, I don't really like Animal House that much just because it's like so easy to be a, a woman and say like, I love those movies and then just clean up. <laughs> so but I can't do that because I have to be, I have to follow my truth. Any other points or do you uh, want to round it up with a score for us here? What is the score out of? One out of 10, one in 10. One out of 10. What is a normal uh, gutted? Re- what is like a normal gutted review for a movie that people don't so like? So it can be. It's it like can vary. It can vary. You know, it can vary because some people say I don't like it, but it's just overrated, or I fucking hate it. You know, it could be a zero or a one, or people go, I just don't. It's overrated five. Like they know it's they they think it's okay, but they don't loathe it. They always find it overrated. Yeah. So it depends on you. So it's it's hard because um, I could give it like different grades and different categories, um, but like again like historical content or like cast or like this and that like soundtrack phenomenal like yeah there are lots of things that are great about it but for me i guess if we're rounding out everything i would say i think that it's overrated i do not hate it i just think it's really overrated and kind of boring and i wouldn't put it on for fun um (laughs) so with that in mind i'm gonna give it a 6.5 wow i did not expect that bit higher than we yeah a lot higher it's a very, I, I think I, well, you just told us you like the movie what yeah <laughs> yeah I think that's well what you just said, six of well, point five. yeah well the things that you don't understand i hyper fixate on the things i love and it and i make it my entire identity so for me so it's kind of like what did you I hate love the most like what, what about it did, did is there something in the movie that pissed you off that like, like is there something you're like this is shit what is it no, there was nothing in the movie that I'm like, that's actually the problem for me. That didn't, it didn't push me in one direction or another. Uh-huh. And that to me is a, is not a good movie. It's just a black. For me. Yeah, yeah, it was just meh. And that, that to me is so much more offensive <laughs> than any of the stuff that's, no, I'm just kidding. But like, no, for me, it's like, I would way rather hate a movie because that's fun. I love to hate things. And mm. uh, I like to walk away from a movie and be like, ah, oh, this is great. I'm thinking about it. It's got me, you know, it's got me riled up. I'm feeling something. This, I just kind of like almost forgot that I watched it, which I know <laughs> is like deeply upsetting. But like, you know, I... I I don't know. I don't know. I think that there's there's nothing inherently bad about it other than the the parts that are racist and rapey and creepy. Um, it's just not great. And also, you cut those you cut those scenes out of the movie. How long of a movie are we talking? Do you think <laughs> you cut out all the shit that's like couldn't work today? I wonder how long we got. But uh, I don't know. It's I think 6.5 is fair. I, I, I'm weighing in a lot of factors, including, you know, I get that it's a really important movie and I would not like boycott it. <laughs> Dave Quist, let's see what you got to say, buddy. Yeah, I um, the thing we mentioned about it's it's like a period piece. This is totally irrelevant to the audience. So I, I agree with that. I, I also have to agree. There's not much plot here. It's pretty thin. Guys, um, it's a comedy for Christ's sakes. Well, There's not a plot in Naked Gun, nor Airplane, I, nor Borat. It's a comedy. You I do want to get, but I do want to get the the negatives out ahead of time. All right. I also, um, and I kind of agree with Ali that there was a couple. I mean, I've seen this movie. I haven't seen this movie a million times. Maybe five. I'll, I'll say five times. Um, a couple times, I do get a little disengaged. Like, um. Was it Flounder with the guy who gets Flounder the car? I, I I forget who this guy even. Larry, who is this guy? I don't even know whose car it is. This is brothers. The legacy. This brother, I guess this brother. It's just like it, it just doesn't matter, right? So I, I kind of agree with that. It is a it's a silly comedy, yes. And so I'm not expecting, you know, Oscar winning writing for original screenplay or something like that. So I get it. Um, the parade at the end, other than John Belushi as the pirate, which is. God damn hilarious. Yeah. This is a 
I don't know what. So what? We we're gonna get kicked out of school, so we're just gonna make this tank thing that just runs over people. And I don't know. Niedermeyer's got to go. What, he's gonna commit murder for real. <laughs> like what is that? So I I, I yeah. found it a little bit too much over the top uh, at the end. Um, but the thing about this movie is, for me, I laugh. There's I, I'm always cracking up. So the the plot is nonsense. Um, why it's set in '62? Who cares? But it always cracks me up. John Belushi is a comedic genius. And in fact, if he never spoke a word in the film, he would be just as funny. Um, and really, the the peeping Tom thing with the ladder, when he looks back to breaking the fourth wall and doing and, and his like eyebrow action, it's it's like some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. I, I, I don't care about the food fight. I think that's dumb. And that's been you know replicated a million times. But thankfully, I watching it back, like that scene is really only like 30 seconds. Um so Belushi's hilarious. I'm just cracking up. And my, and my wife, who doesn't really like the movie, she's just casual. She came and sat down on the couch. She's on her phone on doing something on Pinterest as, as I'm watching the film. And, <laughs> and then Make, she's making kind of, a love making a love quilt purchase. Yeah, or something. Exactly, right? She's crafting some bullshit. I hear her start I hear her just sitting next to me cracking up, but like, just randomly. She doesn't care about the film. It just engages her. Um, and so I think that's really it. The movie does exactly what it's supposed to, which is it makes me laugh. It's ridiculous. There's potential rape of an underage girl. <laughs> you know, there's, they, they go into this all black club, and it's really awkward and strange. And for some reason, they crash into every car that's in the parking lot you know, multiple times. None of it makes sense, but I laugh, and that's it. That's what it does. I, I, I this movie makes me crack up, and so that that those are my thoughts. Give me a number one to ten, Dave Quest. You know the drill. This thing. <laughs> let's see if I, I say six point five, and I could just be on my side. No, nah, <laughs> this is this is a nine, nine out of ten. It's great. The, Holy shit! Have you I, seen? Have you seen movies? <laughs> Do you know how good movies can be? Yeah. As a comedy, this is a nine out of ten. Yes. Wow. Are we doing as a comedy? That's not fair. That we're no, talking about a, movies. A, in yeah, no, no. As a whole, not, I, not, I, I, I'm a, I'm an Ebert Raider, which is. <laughs> Uh, it, it, uh, I judge a movie by by its goal and its ambition. This movie is, is here to make me laugh, and it makes me crack up for for two hours. So it, that in that way is it not? Man, you're the, laughing after the movie ends. The runtime's like an hour and a half. Is it even? Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, that's why it's always like, yeah, good, good. Go no, no, no. I was I'm just gonna start it up here. These notes brought to you, of course, by guttingthesacredcow.com. Go over there, check out what we uh, what we got cooking. Like I said, leave us that five star rating, two or three sentence review on your podcast platform of choice. Notes: No one has worn a pledge beanie since this film was made, and I, for one, would like to see those come back. <laughs> I love that opening scene. Yeah. Right, they get they get shoveled into the corner with what we consider to be the losers that are on the couch and just standing around. They 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 kind of fit the part. <laughs> You know what I mean? Hey, at least at least they were diverse in their rogue gallery of loser pledges at the Omega <laughs> Pledge Party. Our our fraternity rush party was way less formal than the than the Omegas. We just had a couple strippers, a couple kegs, and a vat of jungle juice for the sorority girls to drink. That was our rush party. Otter dropping a major league yabos. It's been way too long since we've heard that in our lexicon. I'm glad we've <laughs> discovered that, rediscovered that. And I think I'll tell my wife to whip out her yabos for some party time later. <laughs> Have you ever had someone ask you to whip out your yabos? Only once. <laughs> and how did that turn out for them? Not great. I didn't think so. <laughs> D-Day's entrance is fantastic. <laughs> Up the stairwell, on a bike, ending with the Lone Ranger theme, and then finger guns to punctuate the entire scene. <laughs> that is how I'll be accepting any and all podcast awards in person. That exact entrance. <laughs> you missed it. You, you too missed this one. I'm shocked. Dean Warmer is an underrated film villain of all time. He is a perfect dick in this film. Also a perfect dick in the cinematic classic. He's also in Ernest Goes to Camp. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Right. I also love the the bit about the the mayor is utterly corrupt. I mean, what yeah. what is all this about? <laughs> when they show Dorfman's picture on the slideshow and Belushi gives a ah is one of the funniest <laughs> all time non dialogue scenes in film history. Just Saturday night, out to dinner with my buddies and having a few drinks, some creeper walk by, we go ah. That <laughs> is ubiquitous for a reason. 
no one Physical calls comedy it, genius. Sorry. Yeah, there is no. And like you said before, I'll get to that in a minute. No one calls a fraternity a frat. It's fraternity. No, no one says frat. Only writers who do not do that. That's no. That's not spoken in real life. <laughs> is that true? It is true. Um, what? Wow. Yeah. yeah it's, I'm a college uh, dropout who definitely was not in any type of social interactions in yeah. school. So I really would not know. <laughs> I was listening I would, to Nine Inch Nails all night. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a fraternity listening to Nine Inch Nails. So we have wow. some common ground. <laughs> Late 70s, early 80s comedies thrived with peeping Tom escapades. Mm. This film, Porky's, Back to the Future, Revenge of the Nerds, Sophie's Choice. The list goes on. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is this is this was a this is the best of all of them, I think. I think you get more skin in Porky's, but uh this one kind of built up the anticipation. <laughs> and then it's great because he just, we get there and he's so late he just falls back. <laughs> I yeah, I I, I, I Revenge of the Nerd's still funny. Definitely has problems, don't get me wrong, but it's uh <laughs> It's still funny. Porky sucks, though. Uh, Ali, what do you think when you see these scenes? <laughs> what goes through your mind? When... <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, not to not to make this like a therapy session or whatever, but like, it's weird because, you know, most people, at least, you know, my age and older, like grew up with this all being kind of normal. And it's only kind of recently or, you know, in a mainstream way anyway, that people revisit these movies with a new lens of like, that's sexist or that's problematic. Cause like typically like you'd be seen as a wet blanket to ever call out anything like this. And so for the most part, I just always tried to like be easygoing and find the stuff funny because everyone around me found it funny, yeah. but it's a little creepy. Like I don't want people fucking being peeping toms around me you know what i mean so it's kind of like yeah at least can, they, 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 they should first of all don't be a peeping tom around ally just subscribe to her only fans <laughs> and pay yeah, for exactly. it American pay way. for it like a gentleman you and can then hear the, you can and, hear the ladder going <laughs> across the siding of and, the inside and then you can find out if ally has major league yabos or not how about that yeah. <laughs> there we go Pledge paddling needs to return. How about yeah. government? How about government officials who get voted out get paddled by their constituents? I guarantee you won't see lenient bail reform programs if paddling was a thing in real life. <laughs> Niedermeyer is a metaphorical fraternity guy who, in real life, always, always, always turns out to be a cop. No, oh, definitely, yeah. When Donald Sutherland gets high with his students and shuts all the shades and throws three different locks is so under the radar hilarious. It <laughs> That's my favorite scene. Yeah, it, it captures the paranoia of people smoking pot in the 70s, as per my parents. That's, uh, that's, that's who showed me this film for the first time, of course, with a little bit of fast forwarding was my parents. <laughs> Ever get high with a teacher? I ask of you. I had a speech communications professor who looked like George Carlin asked me to get high. I said no, but I still got to be in the class. What about you two? What about you two? Ever get high with a, with a professor? Never. never, never high, never high. Did uh, inappropriate things, but never stoning. You never. bang when your teachers? Well, an, let's call it an emotional affair. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, I just switch high schools. Hello. Did you, did you get him fired? Uh, he got himself fired. Was it what? from was it from the ladder climbing into the window? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> how old how old were you? Seventeen. And Ouch. was this like a romance that he just got nailed over or, or how'd that work? Yeah, it was just kind of like uh he was the creative writing teacher. He wrote a book. Of course. Wrote, like, I actually just reread this poem that he performed in front of the entire school about me where he's like asking me to kiss him. It was a little Oh my Christ. <laughs> and ever since Ellie's been wondering why are these older why guys, do I like older keep guys? giving me all these attention. <laughs> I, I can't figure it out. And Neil, De and Neil deGrasse Tyson still has a job? That's amazing. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know what's hilarious? Allegedly. Everybody gets cucked in this movie. Yeah. Oh, we'll get to that. Well, okay. But I'm, I'm, yeah, more, I'm, more right. I'm more amazed. So it was, a, it was it, he, no, nothing physical happened then. Nothing. That, that's what's so crazy. This guy ended up leaving his wife and kids to be with me when I turned, uh, theoretically, when I would turn 18. And uh, that's how, I don't know. I just don't know what pull I must have had as a 17 year old or we're not even doing anything. Like I was like a pretty dorky virgin at the time. And he still was like, yep, that's what I want. That's what I'm gonna so pull he, up you, my life for. <laughs> he's the original, he's the original American beauty inspiration. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah, go. exactly right. Did he, did he kiss his male next door neighbor too? Uh, that's between them. <laughs> So then I, I need to know the conclusion of this story. So yeah, what, 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 he, what he, I'm, Oh, I'm not listening. I, Dave, I'm a professional. Oh, oh yeah. So, He's 100% so, still teaching. 
Um, and he had to switch schools too. So they moved him to a different school and then I switched out. And uh, I actually, you know, a, a little sweet part of the story is like, I'd been a pretty lousy student. It was getting like C's and D's at the school that this was all going down. And when I switched schools, I ended up being like the graduation speaker, like turned my little college or high school life around. Um, but oh. uh, between me and him, like we did secretly go to open mic nights uh, throughout Long Beach doing poetry and me singing guitar for like several months before I shut it down because I eventually realized as the child in the situation, uh, <laughs> kind of like, this is weird. So then you left the wife and kids? So I, yeah, well, I found out about the wife and kids like months after um, and uh, I said like, thank you, no. Um, and so then, you were being like, groomed? I yeah. guess that's the, I guess that's the way to say it. But yeah, like uh, he he tried to make another attempt like uh, like a year or so later. And it was just like at that age, I was like, yeah, now I'm old enough to see like what a fucking loser you are. Um, wow. You know what I mean? You kind of grow out of that stuff. So yeah. how, was he still was he divorced? And did, or did, was he still in touch with the kids or did he get back with I the didn't even want to. <laughs> I didn't want to mess with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I did see that he ended up putting um, uh some art that I did as the cover of one of his poetry books that he released like years later. So I've, I'm wow. still in this guy's mind. How many hey, you're years? Amused. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> how many how many years older was he versus you? So I was 17 and he was 34. Holy shit! He was double your double? age. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh yeah, my. I'm not 34 yet, but even being like, I don't know. The older I get, the more I kind of look back on it and like change. Because you know, at the time, I felt very like, I'm I'm mature. I want to be with this person. It's totally fine. Like I'm almost 18, and then like when you get older, you're kind of like, eh, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> so wait till this comes full circle, and Allie goes to a school and and, and seduces a young high school boy to be uh, uh, her move. Oof. Oof. <laughs> so I wanna, get it now. <laughs> anything for the plot. <laughs> Want to come design a Nine Inch Nails album cover with me? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Why were the Delta Pledges and the ROTC clash with Niedermeyer? You know damn good and well they were not going to war unless they were drafted because that was a voluntary program. I did I, a little research on that. Yeah. What the hell? Strange. Very strange. I think it, this is – sorry, but just to say – the this is the one of the problems with seventies movies is they always have to make a Vietnam War reference and I guess this is their way of working that in and making Niedermeyer that top you know gun gun, gun ho. Kind I of don't guy. know about that. I think it's more of a Harold Ramis, Ramis thing because look at Stripes, case in point, his follow up film where he has Hulka, another one of these super militaristic guys who's a ball busting dick. So I see a common thread. Well, here's another fun fact: the budget obviously for Animal House ran out. When they were doing special effects, because when the short when the when they shot the horse having a heart attack, you can see the money was not spent on special effects. <laughs> An accomplishment is getting a horse in the dean's office. A bigger accomplishment would be getting gun with blanks in college. Holy shit! How much shena <laughs> how many shenanigans would you be thrown out of for in college? I'd be thrown out by my sophomore year, if not sooner, if I had a gun with blanks in my. Uh, possession but that is a fantastic scene though isn't it, it? Is. They, they get <laughs> they, just they were going to that place holy shit the Belushi. way he says shit the way he says shit like three days shit yeah, yeah oh yeah stuff. over the over enunciation <laughs> yeah belushi in the cafeteria is timeless and brilliant the food fight part whatever but the lead up to that fantastic speaking of it gives no shits about anything <laughs> right Whatever happened to food fights? We had them in school. You guys, I'm sure you did too. No, yeah? I thought it was just something that happened only in like cartoons and movies. Yeah, it and stuff. happened for this movie. <laughs> That's it. We uh, had. Oh, we. Oh no, we had. We we had. We had a couple in middle school. Oh yeah, more food fights. I think lead to less guns in the schools. Can that be a campaign <laughs> slogan? I think you're right. When you have an argument, throw potato salad. Yeah. That's this it. this soundtrack is king of. So that's where that song is from. Mm. Allie, how many hand jobs have you given with a rubber with, with with a rubber glove? I need to know this. That's a that's a you have to uh, you have to subscribe to my newsletter for information. <laughs> hand jobs with a rubber glove. That must be the funniest Craigslist request request or subreddit thread I've ever heard of. How Greg, many, how is many this have you given? Oh, sorry. How many have I given? Zero. Uh, yeah, yeah. Zero, zero? Okay. point <laughs> zero. Uh, or nor received. Yeah. <laughs> I like how Belushi had to sneak up a ladder to see top of sorority girls. All you have to do is just go next door and ask them nicely. They'll show you their tits. Believe me, I've done that. <laughs> or, or maybe throw in, hey, I'm on the camera crew for Girls Gone Wild. How about it, girls? 
All right, I can tell why you like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, have you ever taken off your bra and begin to fondle yourself in front of an open window like Mandy did in this film? Yeah, trace your body with your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'm going to say that doesn't happen, as I said on the show. It's totally male fantasy. And, so, and, if, yeah. Yeah. and if you're not, are you even really living your life to the fullest? And why are you not doing that on OnlyFans? Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for stealing that, Dave. Good job. Can you imagine the casting director's role for this film? Okay, ladies, I need you all to get topless and have a pillow fight. Come on, have fun fun with it come on more frivolity more giggling let's go what a job huh these college students all don't look a day under 31 i assume <laughs> i assume this was the same casting director for grease and footloose <laughs> two other equally shitty films uh best Ooh. way best way you cheated yourselves through class anybody anybody have a good cheating through uh, your test story I'm not a cheater. I would rather fail than I, I'm just lazy. So I will not even go to the effort to cheat. Allie, right here. Allie got a good cheating story? Uh, nothing brilliant. I just did kind of the normal things of like writing down test answers on my like my skin somewhere or right. just like nothing, nothing brilliant. I had a I took German 101 my last semester, of my senior year. I'm, I'm you know, mostly German. And my mother goes, terrible idea. It's so hard. I took five years of Spanish. I breezed through it. I go, this, this is not a problem. She goes, no way. It's way harder. I go in day one and this woman is speaking at a clip that she's driving down the Autobahn kind of fast level. <laughs> and I go, the guy next to me go, is this 102? Am I in the right room? He was like, no, no, this is 101. I go, oh shit. And I was like, all right, I, I can do this. I'll do this. And it was too late at that point for the, me to say, uh, to, to drop it. So I go, I'm going to take this pass fail. So there was a guy next to me and I could just tell he was just in it for the easy A because he was getting a lot of stuff. I go, hey man, I recognize you from some from his arm of our parties. Here's the deal. I'll let you in every party for free and you never wait in a line again, as long as I can cheat off your test and I'll get three or four more wrong than you do intentionally. And so that way it doesn't look like you have the same score. He goes, deal. <laughs> Well, that's oh, nice. how, and that's why I passed German 101. That's crazy picking German. I mean, Spanish. I know. I, I think I bluffed my way through a placement test in college. I didn't have to take anything. So, yeah, but going to German, that's. that's oh, I took it for the easy A's. That's why I took German, <laughs> Spanish in college. I go, I need an easy A, especially during pledging. Guys, do you know how hard it is to throw a keg if it's empty? Do you know how hard it is to throw a keg out of a window and break it? Yeah, these weaklings in this fraternity are, are doing it with such ease. Bullshit. That yeah. doesn't happen. Karen Allen goes from not taking any shit as Katie in this role to screeching damsel in distress in Raiders of the Lost Ark. What a leap. <laughs> <laughs> there is more broken glass sound effects in this film than stone cold steve austin's theme song <laughs> there are a million sound effects in this movie breaking glass a ton of yeah the guy playing guitar in the steps i gave my love a cherry <laughs> there's always one dude who did that at a party and belushi nailed that to a t so satisfying yeah. he just deserved every having nothing destroyed That's classic. yeah yeah shout is the one song I never get tired hearing at weddings. That is the one time, like, you know I'm in for this one, kids. Jump right <laughs> in that dance floor. Uh, that not one black classic. guy in the, yeah, yeah, isn't it right? Not, not one black guy in the fraternity at, at all. Okay, all right. But when you go see, when uh, when Pinto takes the girl in the room, I don't know if you caught it, I did. There's a Confederate flag hanging in the room. Did you see oh, that? Jesus. No. I said, now it makes perfect sense why there aren't any black guys in this fraternity. Okay. But you never know where the hell favorite college is. So it's like, like are they in the South? Where is this? I need no answers. Uh, I've been in plenty of fraternity houses, kids, and none of them, none of them have a full bar, mood lighting, a music setup with the flick of a light switch, and a king-size bed in the room. That doesn't happen. <laughs> I think uh, American Pie kind of did a riff on this with um... – uh, Still for his mom. Yes, exactly. I, I saw that. Yeah. I mean, this, that thing is fully decked out. But it's not his house. That, that's his, that's her, that, that's her lake house. It's not his. It's not his fraternity house. <laughs> it's just it's for the guy yeah. who's gets that position. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Pinto contemplating having sex with a drunk, passed out underage girl from Caddyshack. That's a big no no in 2023. <laughs> Every dude has played that how drunk is she game and how many years would this get me in jail for? <laughs> oh, no. 
Never done it. That's why I'm still yeah. out and not in prison. Yeah. Guys had to go, the guys in the cinema had to go on a road trip to find new girls to hang out with. In my days, you would just go into a Yahoo or AOL chat room. Now, <laughs> do just go on apps or just airdrop dick pics and see if there are any takers. So lazy. <laughs> so lazy. Yeah. Where's the romance? Yeah. 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 Put like a Shakespearean sonnet next to that dick, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I love the line, and do you have three dates for my friends? No more uttered sentence than, come on, man, I'll pay for your bar tab. Has made guys bail out of writing term papers to help a buddy who had a girl who wanted to bring her friend out on a date as a quasi-chaperone. Absolutely. When they were all in the bar, the one girl said, what are you majoring in? Primitive cultures. I said out loud, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, For 1978, that even that, that is rough. a lot. That was rough. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. And they left the girls in the bar, but somehow, magically, they got all the way back home. They walked unscathed. home. <laughs> That's the film I also want to see. The journey for these college girls to get back home. How did that happen? <laughs> Hitchhiking? Did they actually some... Texas Chainsaw Massacre? It's really sad. <laughs> Very true. I love when the guy does the the, the switchblade; it just pops yeah. up. <laughs> sorry, and we're leaving. Yes, bad. It's just like sorry. The biggest, the biggest man you've ever seen says, and, and they slowly just one guy sits, another guy's behind, and then the largest man on the planet says, "Can I dance with your date?" Like, <laughs> Do you mind if we dance with your date? Yeah. yeah. Of course not. <laughs> By all means, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Babs, the sorority girl who had otter set up, had 75 stuffed animals on her bed. If that doesn't <laughs> screen psychopath who will give you a toe-curling BJ, but then bash your windshield in because you sneeze at an odd number minute, nothing will scare you off faster. That's so specific. Yes. And of course, uh, I, that's how he, that's how these jokes work. I, I have to get in there and really just the, the obvious answer is stage five clinger. I go deeper with my jokes. Thank okay, you. good. When uh, when he's when he's when the guy's strangling it and then throws it down and it, was she? There's a name for it that she screams as it's yeah. as the stuffed animals in pain. Yeah. Uh, I like. Listen, I think they could do a much better quote that how they ended up for this film. First of all, Niedermeyer would turn out to be Ted Cruz. All right, we can agree on that. <laughs> I love that. That's perfect. Belu yes. Thank you. Belushi would be like a Jerry Springer-esque talk show host or a TV judge. I think Ooh. Dorf... Yeah, all right. They're, they're not all winners. Dorfman would be Mitch McConnell. <laughs> I liked him as a, as a senator. I think that makes yeah. perfect sense. All right. I, don't, I, think it, I think having to be an entertainer would be too much effort for him. He's, he's too much of the moment. All right. Dorfman would be Mitch McConnell. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. D-Day would be Oliver North. Uh, okay. And, and, and this is my favorite one. Otter would be the Fire Festival creator. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can see it. <laughs> the budget for breakaway glass in this film had to be at least five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> they broke more glass here than fill in the blank. Uh, here's another one: the black lawn jockey in front of the mayor's house. Wowie, zowie! That yeah, is still it. a lot for 1978. The Delta House, the Delta Gang, had a filthy fraternity house, which is true to form, but an immaculate and pristine parade float. <laughs> that thing is a front page of Pinterest, as you had mentioned before. Some things th these guys don't strike as like arts and crafts gurus. That was uh, that was curious. When the gal gets launched through the window with the while the kids ring the Playboy, and he says, "Thank you, God." That's hilarious. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's great. Right. This ending is pure fuckery. There's no apologizing or defending this ending. This is not as bad as the way Ivan Reitman read, uh, ended Stripes. Oh, wait, it's the same exact ending because in Stripes, they do a, where are they now? And they also, in that scene, play the same goddamn music <laughs> as Animal House in Stripes. Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's lazy. There's there's nothing to it again as other than Belushi as the as the pirate scampering up the on the roof and just doing a jig right. or whatever he's doing. That's the only thing that's well, worth the watch. Redeeming. 
Yeah. Why why the hell does Niedermeyer have two bullets in his jacket? He's leading a goddamn parade. <laughs> and what does he do with live ammunition? Yeah. And for someone who fashions himself as fashions himself as a wannabe military college dork who is unable from ten feet away to hit a big fat guy to only hit a seltzer bottle, this uh <laughs> this military program we have for this country is uh, is a bit problematic, I would say. I don't know this person. I've never seen this person in my life other than yeah. in this film. Have either of you two who's the military so. military dork, college dork? Niedermeyer, he's been in some other stuff, or in real life we're saying. I'm saying, yeah, like, who does he, he – I don't get this person. I just don't like him, that, and that's it. Well, that's the idea, I would suspect. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. If it's lampooning someone, I don't know who that is, unless we're missing a reference, like, from the Vietnam area, which is totally lost now. This film has not missed a beat. It is still hilarious. I think the pacing is fantastic with the jokes. I've seen this a million times. I laugh still while rewatching this on uh, Saturday. I think I watched it. Yeah. Nothing like the days of the Reverend R-rated comedy with gratuitous nudity. That's right. We still need that. <laughs> we need more of that. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Yes, come on, there Allie. Are... We need more nudity. Yeah, I agree. There... Let's get more dicks in there. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. slow <laughs> down, know. slow down, <laughs> slow down, slow down. We're <laughs> all agreeing. We need a little bit more dicks. Yes, let's, I'm on let's... board. Listen, Allie, Stop let's twisting not... my arm. She's let's... entirely missed the point. <laughs> yes. I think let's not go saying things we can't take back, Allie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are. Listen, obviously, a few cringe moments in here that would not fly today and should not have flown back. Now we're all the first to agree on that. Mm -hmm. But listen, this film is the goddamn blueprint and has inspired tons of teen and college comedies dave you said it this hasn't been usurped this is the original goat for a reason it yeah. does drag a little bit the parade all that at the end you're right when they get kicked off why are we gonna go through this whole rigmarole <laughs> to create a fucking tank out of a car <laughs> and then a, a paper mache the shit out of it on top of it why? <laughs> the wreak havoc on wait, wait, the wreaking havoc on the town. Who cares? The cops <laughs> get you out. Go blow his house up. That's whatever. <laughs> I rewatch this every so often and I laugh my balls off still. It is a seven and a half out of ten for me. You cannot resist laughing. Um no. it's just it's even if it's just John Belushi, it's worth it just for that. The 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 aside exactly the the quip the quips in there too it's 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 great let's see what the blowhards have to say and you know they're gonna say something uh oh critics five star reviews the film is swept through the American box office like a whirlwind precipitating a rash of incipient college romps uh -oh. one one waits with trepidation but at least the trailblazer has vitality and charm who wrote this Donald Sutherland's character. It's Chat his GPT. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's his job. <laughs> Earns a diploma for tasteless low budget comedy. Shitty critic pun gong. <laughs> Animal House is a self congratulatory mess, but it's also spattered with terrific one liners and sight gags. And it's the best showcase extant for John Belushi's subversive, attention grabbing screen presence. Spot on. That's my yeah. review. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, like, yeah, who, was there someone else that you said would have been Bluto, or was that, uh, was John Belushi always, you listed the names earlier, I but did. I forget let me, Bluto. Let me, let me go there back, because be I no cannot else. imagine it. No. It was, no, was your... no, 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 no one had him else. Uh, that was it. It was uh, D-Day, Boone, Otter. Those are the ones that they, and Hoover. Those are the ones they picked. Yeah, he does so much of the heavy lifting of the of of this movie for me. Like, the, yeah. I mean, obviously, he's just. Yeah. So, I mean, he's he's what makes it a six point five for me instead <laughs> of a four. Uh, next yeah. review. See website for more details. I love a guy working on a plugin for his own website traffic. That's pure balls. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can catch me at Dave underscore Quist on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Critics, one-star one reviews. Critics, one Despite the comedic reviews, tone of some critics, scenes, the result reviews, is below expectations, critics, and it reviews. never stops being a monotonous pastiche. Uh, anyone who uses the word pastiche needs, yeah. a, kick, needs a kick in the piche deal. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Particularly that, I don't know, I don't even think that's using the word correctly, because I think this <laughs> movie is kind of, I think all the movies that came after Animal House are the pastiche, no? Well, pastiche is a conglomeration of anything that's a, a work you know, film, art, whatever. Nerd. This is this is this is an exactly an English lit trying to be cutesy poo. 
This is why they're the worst people. While the low comedy is undeniably effective, the film leaves behind a bad taste of snobbery and petty meanness. How? The losers, <laughs> the That's losers, not true. the losers win in the end, you dumb dildo. Oh. Next one. I never liked this. I never will. My apologies <laughs> to all its diehard fans. Uh, apology accepted. Now, you should self flagellate with a cat of nine tails while reciting the Gettysburg Address. That is your punishment. Thank you. So I asked Ch Chap GPT about pastiche no i didn't i looked at it <laughs> <laughs> artistic work that imitates that of another work artist or period i don't think that i think my point stands no. yes it is yes. the og as you had stated yeah. a dated rarely funny celebration of being spoiled and white uh well i mean <laughs> true although you know, there's that funny line there they call them like the nazi youth or something so yeah hitler youth yeah, the hitler youth yeah, yeah. Amazon five star reviews. As a former high school dropout, this movie inspired me to go to college. Now retired, my quality of life is far better having experienced this motivational film. A perfect gift for anyone considering higher education. Signed, Elon Musk. Oh, God. <laughs> Next one. How much is there to say? Funniest movie of all time, Imho. Imho. Good quality as far as video and stuff, but I don't imagine anyone buying this for that reason. I mean, who wants to see Donald Sutherland's butt in 4K? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Need to do some Annie, lunges. Annie thoughts? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just thinking about uh, Sutherland's ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you say what, something? Yeah. yeah. We're, 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 so uh, approval? Can we get a mop and bucket over there? That uh, about the, <laughs> yeah, I'm house, drooling. Please. I'm drooling. He's an older man, you know. Wearing he's a, a teacher. I mean, yeah, you know, it's perfect. She, yeah, this she's is. got a tie. <laughs> Gay or teaching me. <laughs> this was filmed in Eugene, Oregon, near where I live, so we get a kick out of it. So let me get this right. If you didn't live near where a film is shot, do you get less of a kick out of it? This logic makes no sense to me. I don't get it. Yeah. I actually feel like I'm more judgmental of movies that take place where I was from because I'm going to be more likely to be like, that's not how we talk. <laughs> where are you from? <laughs> that's not how we do it. Oh, Long Beach. Um, Long Beach, California. Yeah. Uh, it's like Freedom Riders took place there, and it's just like, ugh. Anyway. This was, oh, sorry, next one. I could relate to hell yeah, babe, and great parties every weekend, driving somewhere to get drunk and squeezing boobs. Signed, Cynthia Nixon. Oh God! <laughs> Amazon one star reviews. I am easily amused, but this was silly, not funny. Okay, <laughs> sure. Do you have one that says this mop did not uh, sop up the mess on my floor? Because I know we get the Amazon ones where they're reviewing. Oh, they <laughs> they're reviewing some other thing. You, you, you listen to the podcast. <laughs> We watched Fast Times at Ridgemont High the same weekend. Fast Times was still spectacular. The years have not been kind to Animal House. It was painful. We were watching it with our 16-year-olds, and they love Fast Times and were bewildered by the attraction Animal House could hold. So let me get this straight here, reviewer. <laughs> so they were cool with the dude banging an underage girl in a dugout and then leaving her high and dry when it's time to take her for an abortion? Cool. That's a villain. That's a, that's character. That's story. That's plot. I like Fast Times way more than Animal House. Fast Times loses all of its steam at the halfway mark. It is a complete shit show at minute 45. The first half's great. The it second is. half stinks. That happens so often in these movies. It's such a bummer. But one thing I'll say is like so many 70s movies are mm, – at least 40 minutes too long that is not the problem with animal house uh i give it credit there <laughs> it almost didn't know what to do with that much time and then we end up with a parade scene <laughs> let's build a float and yeah <laughs> call it a day yeah. <laughs> stupid date rape friendly boozy on college unfunny college humor starring 40 year olds signed charlie sheen <laughs> very bad language oh gee the r rating didn't tip you off that this is, wasn't bambi stupid god i loathe people and their yeah. lack of intelligence dave quist did ali gertz gut this sacred cow uh absolutely not i think she <laughs> she makes good points but in the end she still likes it and and i'm not we're we're looking to take this sacred cow and absolutely eviscerate it all she did, I think, was give it a poke in the knee. 
when you when you give it a six and a half, this cow ain't even close to being gutted. This is a it's a, it's all right. It has funny moments, but nonetheless, I had a blast with you, Allie. This was yeah. great. So glad you came on, Dave Quist. I like you and the captain's uh, co captain's chair. This was also a joy. Happy Everyone to be here anytime. Ah, oh, sweet. Anytime, indeed. Next time, everybody. We'll see you later. Aloha.